All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, we are gonna be playing around with a new scan tool. It's not a new scan tool that's out on the market, uh, but it's a new scan tool that I'm gonna be demoing. Um, I ended up getting this unit sent to me. It is the Texa unit. And what is nice about this unit that I think is pretty impressive is that it is, it's not just automotive um, based. It does from the semis to the HD, um, it does off-road to the power sports, you know, the marine boats, um, it does tractors. It, it, it's, you can really load this, this unit up with just about anything that's out there. So what is nice about that is you don't need, in theory, obviously you need more than one scan tool in my opinion, because not one tool does it all, but it is nice that there is one tool that covers so much. Uh, I don't really know of any other scan tools that, that really offer this kind of coverage in one platform. Uh, I think, uh, I, I really think it's, it's pretty impressive, honestly. So the coverage I think is pretty remarkable. Uh, the unit that got sent to me only has uh, the power sports and the marine uh, loaded onto it. And I'll get into that in a minute. So anyway, yeah, let's get into uh, unboxing. I've already unboxed it, but uh, we'll just go kind of through it a little bit again. So as you can see, Automotive Cutting Edge Solutions, this box, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it's definitely a box that will withstand the test of time. So I do, do like the box that it, that it did come in. So, okay. So box, nice, nice heavy duty box. Like I said, first open it. Here is the scan tool. This is a window based scan tool. As you can see down there in the corner. It does come already preloaded. It's got the team viewer. It's got a tech support icon. Uh, it's got the, the program icon. And you know, it, this, this comes pretty much ready to, to, to rock and roll. Um, you do have to register it, sign up and everything else, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. After putting in my information and everything else, since this is Windows based, it automatically loaded my, my settings that are on my computer and stuff as far as my backsplash and stuff. So that's kind of cool, <laughs> honestly. It comes with this nice leather case. Uh, this case snaps in, okay? Um, this unit, I'll just take this unit out real quick, maybe. This unit has some serious weight to it. I mean, this thing is, uh, you can tell this thing's not cheap. Uh, you can also tell that it, it can withstand, you know, the shop environment. Uh, another nice thing about this, it has the plugs. It's got the USB, HDMI, uh, SIM card, and the charging dock or charging port. And these do have a seal around them and everything. So these, I mean, like I said, getting chemicals or whatever, just, you know, dust from the shop and everything else, it's nice and protected. Okay. It does have the camera on the back side of it. And like I said, just the, sh the sheer weight of it, it's pretty impressive. It does have the keys down here on the bottom. It has a keyboard key. Um, couple it's got an up arrow down arrow windows key power key um, so yeah I mean it's it's a windows based tablet putting it back into this leather case this case is nice um, it does have the snaps right here on the back it's got the forward-facing camera as well okay but anyway so this leather case it does have the kickstand on the back so you can set it up. It also has the handhold too so you don't drop the unit. Uh, I personally don't care for the handhold, uh, not just on this unit. I have a couple other scan tools that have the similar thing. Um, I just, for me, it's awkward holding it like this. I mean, I, I just feel more comfortable holding it like a tablet but anyway i mean like i said this thing has some serious weight to it it is it's pretty impressive the problem with this thing is 
we need to plug it into something to see if it works. And it does not have automotive downloaded to it. Hmm. Well, let's fix that. So behind me, this is my 2016 Razor Turbo 1000. Uh, this is what we are gonna plug into and read some data. Uh, I just picked this up not too long ago. Um, it does, it did have some issues. It ha still has a couple other issues that I am going to be fixing and maybe putting out some videos while doing, doing so. Uh, some of the issues that I did have when I did first get this unit was the charging. Okay, so the charging of this unit was not, charging of this unit was not working with all the accessories on, which, you know, it, it's it's got a lot of accessories from the light bar to the stereo. It's got a bunch of, it's got a couple of amps in it. Um, it's It's got a lot of aftermarket stuff. So I was having charging issues. Uh, and I since have that fixed, um, but let's uh, let's go in and kind of see what this uh, Texa unit, what kind of data and everything this uh, this unit can can read. So let's get into it. I hope that the screen recording is working. Like I said, I have not used the screen record on this yet, uh, so I'll keep trying to uh, point this to the camera. But I hope that the screen recording is working. So we have the main menu. This is the main menu that will pop up. And as you can see, which is grayed out, but we have the, the automotive, we have the HD trucks, we have the off-road like tractors and everything, we have motorcycles, and we have the marine. So we scroll down a little bit more and there's services, their uh, settings, an update check. When you first load it up, it will come up with some information right down here saying that the truck software update uh, 50.0 is out. So if you did have that loaded onto your tool, you would want to update it, uh, that it does have a new update available for it. Uh, unlimited FCA diagnostics um, with Texas security access. So Fiat Chrysler vehicles, this, does do the security gateway modules. You do have to register it. You do have to pay the 50 bucks to get it registered. But once you do that, this is this is good to go to be able to get into the newer vehicles to clear codes, to read data. These are vehicles you cannot get into uh, without having the security access. So the fact that this does that, and it, it, is, it is able to do that, that that's, that's a thumbs up in my book for sure. Okay. So we are in the diagnostics, we pick a category, we have motorcycles, we have personal watercraft, we have snowmobile, and we have utility vehicle quad. So this is a utility vehicle slash quad. Um, one thing, okay, so something that just popped up, okay, is it's saying that there is an update available for the Marine, as you can see right there. So that's not anything I'm gonna worry about uh, updating at this moment. So we're just going to go ahead and exit out of that. But as you can see over here on the left hand side, we have the manual identification. So you can manually input the vehicle. Uh, it also has the pass through support and solved problems. So it, it's, it's got some good information and stuff in there. But let's just go right into the diagnostics and kind of see what's what's available. 
all your makes all your makes are in here so Articat, Can-Am, Coleman, Gas Can, I mean list just goes on and on so we are looking for Polaris Ranger and then we are going to go down to Polaris 1000 or I think it's just Polaris Turbo in here the Ranger Razor XP4 Turbo so hit that unit pops up it has the e EPS which is electronic power steering the instrument panel and the petrol injection which is fuel injection so let's just go right into the uh, electronic power steering let's say you don't know where the diagnostic port is honestly I didn't know where the diagnostic port was on this when I first bought it um, but the main screen right here you obviously can hit start or it has this window over here to the right go ahead and hit that and it will show you the the cable that you need okay it will show you the location of where the the data link connector is going to be and in this case it's under the hood obviously this is a generic generic picture of like a side by side but what is cool it's also got a little video of the actual vehicle and the actual location that's pretty sweet so let's go ahead and do next you know what it's probably not going to register because I don't have it hooked up so we'll do that now let's go ahead pull, pull this off And the diagnostic link connector is right here. So we just pull that out. Actually, I'm gonna set this, set this aside. We have the unit. Let's go ahead and get it plugged in. And we need ignition power. Ignition power. We have power to the unit. Okay. So, electronic power steering. Select the startup mode. We're just going to do the self diagnostics. It's communicating with it right now. I'm not sure if you heard the beep, but it did beep. And I'm not sure if another light comes on once it's connected. Doesn't look like it. But once it makes communication, once it makes communication to the VCI, it does it does beep registering, letting you know that, hey, I'm connected. So we're just gonna go in here, we're gonna hit confirm. Okay, this is not, I have a I have a code in here, and this is from, from my ride yesterday. But it's got the five minute key on, engine off, power save mode. So what happens with these units, which I found out, <laughs> key on, I was blasting the radio yesterday. We stopped to get some water, get something to eat and stuff, and, and playing the radio and everything, and got into the unit and I had no power steering. Okay, so it does, what it does is, after a five minute key on cycle, it ends up cutting off accessories so it's going to cut off power steering it's going to start shutting things down so it doesn't waste the battery even though i have a dual battery set up in here um uh it's i, I should have just ran the radio without the key on i wouldn't have ran into that issue what i ended up having to do turn the key off turn the key back on and it reset itself it's kind of like the throttle bodies once they code that goes into a limp limp in mode and then you cycle cycle the key power and you're good to go until it registers a fault again. But anyway, so that's a that's a history code. It's memorized. Okay, it's not an actual. If it if it was an active code, it would say active and it would be in red. Okay, so we go in here to the perimeters and the perimeters for the electronic power steering. So we have the in input torque, output torque, steering motor current, inverter temp. So those those are pretty cool things. Uh, 
I mean, more data than I thought was going to be on um, on a unit like this. Now, to graph, yep, okay, so you double tap on each one of these, and you're able to actually, oh, double tap, come on, you're actually able to graph the information, okay? Another cool thing, you come down here to, it looks like a funnel, you hit the funnel, and you can select the data PIDs that you want. Let's say we want motor current and we want input torque. Okay, so we hit the check. And now we have, we have those. And you know what, let's just go test it real quick. That's what's nice about electronic power steering. This thing does not need to be running. So, and the, the refresh rate of this is, so far, so far in my opinion, the refresh rate on this scan tool, I mean, it's, it's pretty spot on. We will uh, we'll end up going for a test drive in a little bit which is my favorite part. And uh, we'll just kind of see the response rate and how the RPMs um, register with, with you know, taking off and if, if there's any kind of lag and stuff in the scan tool, if it's, you know, how good it is. Now, as far as the zoom, I didn't, I don't know, can you zoom? Hmm. You know what, that I'm not sure if we can zoom on the graphing. So that's something I'm gonna have to find out because that would definitely, that definitely comes in handy. So let's back out of this. Let's, uh, let's go into some that has a little bit more data pids. So backing out, let's go into, let's go into The instrument panel, there, there's. Uh, I'll tell you right now, we're gonna go. We'll go into that. Um, it's obviously the same cable. There's not many. There's not much PIDs. It, it's not. It's not a smart um, cluster. I mean, it, it does give you information on the cluster, like you know your your temperature and, and stuff like that. But it's. We're not gonna have a lot of information when it comes to uh, through the scan tool. So right now, it tells us that it's in park. We go up to the perimeters and the, it gives us the odometer, okay? Uh, another nice thing, if we go into the ECU information, it gives us the model code, the part number, the control serial number. I mean, that's all, all zero, so I don't know what's going on with that. We'll have to go to the ECM and see what it says. But it says the ECU part number, um, software version, software release number. Um, so it definitely has some uh, good information in there, I think. Let's go ahead and back out. Let's go into the um, to the PCM. When I first got this, it did have a check engine light on. It had an overboost code. Uh, I since cleared cleared the code. It has not came back, and I've ran the poop out of this thing. So not sure what that's all about. Just waiting to see if it comes back on or not. So go into the status here, and it will tell you which gear we're in. Uh, we're obviously in park. Uh, it tells you, you know, misfire detection is active, all-wheel drive, I mean, it, it's just got all kinds of stuff. So, misfire fuel cutoff is active, um, all-wheel drive, not active, the brake switch is not active. I mean, so, just coming in here, you know, these are going to be a lot of yes and no's, active or not active, um, telling you that the throttle body learn is completed. Uh, I mean, it's... The fuel pump, right now the fuel pump is off. The crankshaft sensor signal, it's saying no, so there's, it's obviously not running, it's not seeing a signal. Uh, governor overspeed, not active. That, let's go into, so we go into the ECU information. So it has the model code, part number, um, control unit serial number, that's just, it's got the VIN in there. The ECU part number, the EC, uh, the hardware part number, so again, this is this is all good information. Then let's go into the activations. 
activation. So this is your bi-directional control. So we have the boost control valve. We have the boost control duty cycle. We have the cooling fan driver. Let's go into the cooling fan driver. Cooling fan driver, press confirm to continue. Activate. To activate it, we press 1. So I ended up pressing 1. Now it's going to be activating. And you can hear the cooling fan kick on. So the cooling fan did kick on. So we have the front wheel drive output, bi-directional, fuel injector control, um, fuel pump. Let's do the fuel pump. Press confirm. Press 1 to activate. And I doubt you guys can hear it with my 3D printer going. But I do hear the, the pump priming right now. So confirm. And it has both ignition coils. So good bi-directional controls, especially, I mean, a lot more than I thought was, you know, I don't work on these every day. Um, so a lot more bi-directional controls than I thought was going to be on this. And it's honestly, let's go into the perimeters. It's got a lot more um, data PIDs than I thought was going to be on this as well, too. It does have your misfire counters. Uh, weighted misfire counter, desired torque, uh, throttle angle mass, airflow correction factor, throttle body learning. I mean, it. it I'm not going to go through each one of these, but if you guys can see, it's got the target boost pressure of 13.34 psi, uh, boost temperature. That's a good data PID. Engine load. It's obviously saying 100% right now. Not sure why. Boost pressure sensor. The Lamba sensor. Like I was saying earlier, I when I first got this unit, I was having some issues with the charging of it. Uh, once the vehicle was running and I had some accessories and everything on, it would go from 13.9, 13.8 volts um, down to 12.6. Obviously, that's, that's an issue. Um, and what I ended up finding is that the voltage regulator on this unit, here is the voltage regulator. I'm not sure if you guys can really see it in there, but the pigtail is completely burnt. Okay. This unit used to be mounted right here, up underneath, okay? Um, here is the plugs for it. You can see where that, it's just completely melted. So, but here's the thing. <laughs> and I don't know why Polaris did this. So, from doing my research, the voltage regulators used to be mounted in the back of the vehicle um actually i'll show you it used to be mounted right here this is my new voltage regulator but this is where they used to be mounted they ended up there was a recall or a tsb or something and polaris ended up moving them from here because they were getting hot adding a wire loom which this is the other end of the wire loom again burnt this wire loom look at the gauge of wires on this that's 12 gauge no no that's 14 gauge wire 14 gauge wire that runs all the way up the car to right here okay these are 10 gauge Not sure why they did that. I don't know why they didn't make it 10 gauge all the way back to the stator. Um, so doing that obviously creates a lot of heat. Um, that's a lot of amperage that's going through there, creates a lot of heat, and it just melts melts these. So I ended up getting a Rix voltage regulator. It's a higher amp regulator. Uh, it's connected directly to the battery, so I eliminate I eliminate both these wires or both these wire terminals here. So it's hooked up directly to the battery and instead of 
running all the way through the car and going back to the stator, which is right here. I mean, here's your stator in here. Here's the wires that come out to the stator. Um, I ended up getting a Rick's unit because of all the aftermarket accessories that are on here. I needed something that was going to produce better power uh, for when I do have all my, my loads on. Uh, when I have my my lights on and my radio and everything else uh, and so far and like I said I ended up putting it back into the old location uh, the heat sinks on this Rick's unit is it, it's just a just a much better unit I mean haven't had any issues with it getting getting hot or burning up the pigtails so that's one issue that I have ran into um, when with this used unit which is going to be pretty much you buy anything used there's going to be things that you need to fix uh, but that is one issue since then I did get this taken care of and so yeah that's that so if you guys have a Polaris and you guys are running into that kind of issue I definitely recommend the Rick's unit actually I'll let's compare these two I'll show you So the new unit and the old unit. Um, Rick's has a 50 amp fuse and I think that's I think that's eight gauge wire, um, but it's also got the 10 gauge wire that comes out and this goes directly to the stator, but here's Here's from the regulator. Um, it's just just a better thought out uh, voltage regulator, uh, especially, like I said, especially running dual batteries, especially running all these loads. Uh, definitely something I don't want to be stuck out on a trail. So ended up bypassing all the wiring inside the vehicle um, and going directly to the stator, which I feel is just a better better option as far as that. So. Let's uh, let's go for a ride. You guys want to go for a ride? I want to go for a ride. Let's do this. All right, guys. So let's get this crap out of the way. So I have my VCI plugged in to the razor. Uh, I have it routed over the over the windshield. That way, it doesn't get caught um, underneath the hood or anything. I am reloading the program so we can go for a test drive. And that we follow state laws. Eye protection.
right, so something I did notice and I didn't notice before is I don't see it recording. Recording the drive. Um, so, is this something that we have to monitor while we're driving? If so, that, that's kind of a bummer. Um, I keep hitting the same thing. Well, shoot, that whole test drive was pointless. Well, that sucks. And it may do it, and I'm just not seeing it, um, but that is definitely something I think every scan tool, scan tool should have is the ability to record. Uh, so you can actually go back after your test drive and monitor, you know, review the data. Well, crap. Sorry, guys. That's kind of a bummer. I thought we could go back and uh, review this information. And like I said, it may do it, and I'm just not seeing it. I'm just not seeing it. Dang it. And here comes the train. Choo choo! Well, let's get out of here. That's it guys, go for a little test drive. Uh, obviously, I, I hope this thing can record. Uh, I'm pretty sure it does, I just haven't figured it out. Um, I need to reach out to Texa uh, and make sure um, that I'm doing everything correctly. But I wanna be able to uh, you know, bring you guys some content with this, with this new scan tool and everything. So there's gonna be more things that I'm gonna be using it for and uh, I'll, Keep you guys posted. Uh, also, another thing, um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and I am in the process of making pink pulse sensors. So, that being said, um, I am going to be doing, I got to figure out the specifics, but I want to do a fundraising, a fundraiser for uh, breast cancer awareness to be given to a charity to try to, you know, just give back. Um, there's a there's hundreds of thousands of people and families that have been affected by this and I think it would be a good cause and, and you know every every little bit helps I think I'll probably do a raffle um, like I said I don't know specifics if it's gonna be ten dollars a ticket or whatever 
to a charity and, and that money gets put into into the raffle in order for you guys to win a, a pink pulse sensor. You know, every little bit to try to try to get a give back in any way possible. And not necessarily just to technicians, but maybe to a technician's um, family that has been affected. Uh, like I said, we'll figure out specifics and, and uh, got a little bit of time and stuff. But uh, that's, that's some things that are kind of in the works. So hang in there, guys. I really do appreciate the support, the views. Um, you know, I'm not wearing a hat this time just because, you know, you got guys on there talking crap about how I wear a hat. Well, you know what? It is what it is, man. And you're going to call me an idiot for how I wear my hat? Well, you're the one watching my videos. You're the one commenting on my videos about how I wear a hat. I don't know. I, I don't think I'm the idiot, <laughs> but that's no here there, nor there. So whatever, um, you know, we can go on to all the, you know, hateful things that people want to post on YouTube and everything else. You know, the keyboard tough guys, you know what? Keep, take that negativity somewhere else. I really don't need it and it's not going to be part of my channel. So, uh, that being said, thanks for watching guys.